Hey y'all, Lila with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's Tumblr tutorial, I am so excited to show y'all. This is such an adorable mug. I don't even know what I'm going to call it. Winter threw up on a rustic glittered tumbler. I don't know. <laughs> so if you do want to purchase this tumbler or any other tumblers I have available, check out my website, misskisscreations.com, and you can purchase there. As far as this tutorial, like always, all of my materials will be listed in my description below, including some direct links and coupon codes. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. So today I'm using a 12 ounce mug from Maker Flow Crafts. They are linked in my description below. I'm going to first prep my tumbler. This is how I prep every single tumbler. I use a sanding block. It's not wet. I've always just used a dry sanding block and I use a 180 grit or lower sanding block to sand these tumblers. Make sure you're sanding the bottom, the top and the handle. So a lot of people for the handle, if you have paper sanding, I guess paper sanding paper <laughs> you could just use the sanding paper and uh, sand inside of the handle but I just try to make this work and then I wipe my tumblers down with my 91% alcohol make sure you're wiping it down very well until your paper towel or cloth is completely clean and not gray anymore to remove any of those excess oils and sanding dust that may have been transferred on the tumbler that takes a couple moments to dry and then we are going to add these beautiful colors and glitter on the tumbler so the way that I'm adding the glitters to the tumbler, I'm using the adhesive method and I've recently discovered adhesive apothecary and guys, look at that pigmented color. This is not only paint, this is a paint, a primer and adhesive. You only need one coat. So you see that one coat I'm adding, I don't need to let this dry, add another coat. This again, magic in a bottle. So these colors are just I can't, y'all know, so I'm obviously affiliated with them now. I try products for the first month and then I ask them to be an affiliate and thankfully they said yes. So I do have a code to try these out, 10% off code Miss Kiss, and I will have their website linked in the description. So once you add all of this paint to your tumbler, you're going to add this beautiful glitter balls from Glitter Heart Co to your tumbler and I thought about adding two colors but there's kind of a color shift to this glitter and just beautiful. I loved how this looked on the blue and again I do have a coupon code um, Miss Kiss as well and their website will be linked in my description. Look at that shine whenever it decides to focus. <laughs> so once I finish adding all the glitter to my tumbler I'm going to spray my tumbler immediately even if that paint is wet underneath. I'm gonna spray my tumbler immediately with my Krylon Crystal Clear Acrylic Coated. I spray that so the glitter doesn't move around whenever I epoxy. So it just has a smoother application of that epoxy if you just spray one even coat of this. Once you spray your tumbler with your Krylon Crystal Clear Acrylic Coating, let your tumbler sit and air dry for at least 25 minutes. You wanna make sure it's completely dried before you're moving on to the epoxy. So I'm gonna go outside, spray this tumbler, let this sit for 25 minutes, and then we'll move on to epoxying our tumbler. All right, so now that the tumbler is dry, I am going to start epoxying my tumbler. This is a 12 ounce mug. So what I do is I times 12 by two, which is 24. And then I just kind of round up to 30. So I mix a total of 30 mLs of epoxy to apply to this tumbler. So that's 15 mLs part A and 15 mLs part B. So with this handle, what I typically do whenever I apply it over the glitter is I turn off my tumbler once I have like a kind of a base of epoxy on. And then I just take my time and I just focus on the handle and I make sure that handle area is completely covered with epoxy. I am adding a lot of epoxy to this because I want a nice even coat and I wanna make sure that there's no bumps or anything like that into this epoxy whenever it's dried. Once I have all of my epoxy on the tumbler, I'm going to let my tumbler spin on the cup turner for about four hours. I'm then gonna turn off my cup turner, place my cup on a drying rack, and let it cure completely for another 20 hours. So I want at least 24 hours of drying time before moving on to the next step. So um, I always like to have 24 hours, but if you are using your facet epoxy, you can obviously do it within like five hours and we'll move on to the next step. So I'm gonna apply this epoxy, let it cure, and I'll see y'all to add the distress to the tumbler. 
Now that my epoxy is completely cured, look at that shine. Like it doesn't get any better than Flint Sisters epoxy. I'm so sorry. So um, I'm first going to just clean up the rim with my X-Acto knife and then just wipe it down with 91% alcohol again because I don't know why I'm addicted to that stuff. To make the Distress look, all you need is Elmer's glue and a paintbrush. I'm using a Mod Podge brush, but you can use any type of paintbrush you have. All you do is you place that Elmer's glue all around the tumbler and you just brush it up and down strokes. You don't have to start from the top to the bottom as long as that um, Elmer's glue is on that tumbler. And then you'll see I'm trying to cram it near that handle area and it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be one even layer. It just has to get placed on the tumbler, okay? So I do a thinner layer. I don't do a thicker, but whichever way you wanna do it. You let this sit for about three minutes before we move on to adding the paint. So in the meantime, while that dries, I'm gonna show you the paint that I'm using. It's apple barrel, apple barrel paint. <laughs> I'm using white and the parrot blue and I'm applying this with a wet and wild brush. I've placed those paints inside of my painter tr tray and I've added way too much paint, but that's just how I am. Y'all know I'm heavy handed. And after three minutes, I'm going to apply those colors onto this tumbler. So you'll notice I'm starting from the top and I'm doing one stroke from the top to the bottom. I am going quickly because I want to make sure I get everything on this tumbler. But you'll notice that some of that Elmer's glue dried and some of it didn't. That's what I want. I don't want to add it. If you add it while the Elmer's glue is completely dried, then it's going to start peeling. You want to make sure you add this paint. That's why I say three minutes. It's a perfect time for me. Once I have this paint added to the tumbler, immediately I'm taking my heat gun from CC DIY. I'm placing it on high and I'm adding high heat to this tumbler. This is going to heat up the tumbler. So make sure you do have this tumbler on your tumbler arm. Make sure that you're applying that heat directly onto that tumbler and you'll see the cracking starts happening. I love this process and this part because it just is so much fun. Now the thicker paint, or I'm sorry, the thicker glue you have on your tumbler, the more cracky it'll get, <laughs> crackly it'll get. So I have a thinner coat. I didn't want as much cracks <laughs> in my tumbler. So just keep that in mind. If you have a thicker coat, still wait that three minutes, add your paint and then put your heat on your tumbler. Right after you've applied your paint to your tumbler, I personally like to take a baby wipe, but you can take 91% alcohol and just rub away some areas to make that even more distressed look. So I do this right after I apply the paint. So some of the paint is still wet, some of the glue is still wet. I do this all in one process because it looks sloppy and I want it to look sloppy and distressed and worn out and it's not going to be perfect and that's the beauty of these tumblers. You really can't mess up this tumbler. You can peel away as much paint as you want or you can keep as much paint as you want. I always tell y'all these tumblers are made for inspiration so you guys create anything you like and I know whatever you make it's going to turn out beautiful. So this is the reason why I like to wait at least 24 hours for my epoxy to cure because if I place like a baby wipe, 91% alcohol, fingernail polish remover, it might weaken the epoxy and it might mess up the tumbler and then break that seal. So just keep that in mind. That's why I like to wait my full 24 hours before moving on to applying anything over the epoxy. So after I do this, the best part about this, you don't have to seal anything. You don't have to spray it with anything. You go right into applying a coat of epoxy. I applied about 15 mLs of epoxy, so 7.5 part A and 7.5 part B, totaling 15 mLs of epoxy. So once I'm finishing epoxy in the tumbler, then we're gonna move on to adding the winter explosion on the tumbler, okay? So I'll see y'all after I epoxy the tumbler. <laughs> Now that the tumblers are epoxied, you can see I made four or five of them. Um, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and trim the rim of the top of the tumbler just to get any of that excess epoxy removed. 
and then I take a 180 grit sanding block and I sand around these tumblers. I don't do it too much. I just want the surface to be as flat and even as I can make it. You don't have to worry about sanding away the glitter on this process because you have two coats of epoxy so you shouldn't sand away any of the glitter. Once I finish sanding, I wipe it down with 91% alcohol and then I place my tumblers back inside of the tumbler arm and then we're going to go outside and I'm going to show you how I create that snow explosion on the tumbler. Before we go outside, let me show y'all the materials that you'll be needing for this next step. So I've printed my decals or my image on a water slide paper from Creative Fabrica. Again, it'll be linked in my description below. You want to print this on water slide paper. <laughs> I thought that I was printing on my clear or transparent water slide paper, which is here but I actually got the papers mixed up in my pile and I use this brand, but I accidentally printed it on the white water slide paper. You'll see I make it work in the end, but I do recommend you getting the transparent or clear water slide. So this isn't a water slide tutorial, but this is how I seal my water slides. You spray your uh, image with Rust-Oleum, let it sit for 15 minutes, spray it with Plasti Dip, let it sit for 15 minutes, and then spray it again with Rust-Oleum and it is completely sealed and it is ready to go to be placed on your uh, tumblers or surface. Now let's go outside and add that winter explosion on the tumbler. This part is really easy. All I'm doing is I'm taking spray paint. I have flat spray paint, but you don't need flat spray paint. You can use satin or gloss. I think the flat looks better. It looks more snow-like, but again, if you don't have flat on hand, use any finish you have. All I do is I just spray the area that I want to be sprayed with the snow. So you'll see I'm just slowly trying to focus on that one area. If you want, you can add this all around the tumbler. I just wanted to have kind of like that bleach stain and to make it look like snow. And then you just place it back on your cup turner and I let it dry for about 25, 30 minutes before adding the image to the tumbler. Also for the spray paint, I only sprayed one coat of spray paint, but if you want, you can always add two just so it's not as transparent. But like I said, this was a white decal and you'll see that the white decal, I have to do something extra to make it look different. And you can also do that if you have the transparent decal. So here I am just uh, doing the water slide step. So in my container, I have warm water. All I do is I put the hot and cold water on on my kitchen sink and then I just have warm water here. I like it better warm, hotter than colder. If it's colder, I feel like it doesn't, the paper doesn't remove from the backing as quickly, but cold water does work. I'm applying these water slides right to this uh, spray painted surface. So I didn't epoxy after spray paint. This is about 30 minutes after I spray painted and I'm applying them right to the surface. This is why I prefer spray painting over uh, like acrylic paints or anything like that. It really is easy to apply these right over to the spray paint. And with me sealing those water slides with a Plasti Dip and the Rust-Oleum enamel, you can move these water slides around so much easier and you don't have to worry about them breaking or ripping or that image fading. A lot of people are really scared to work with water slides because they're not sealing them properly and they're too uh, flimsy and they tear easily. But you'll see with this image, I just wet the tumbler, I placed the image on the tumbler and I actually wasn't happy with it. So you'll see that I peel up that image from the tumbler and it doesn't break, it doesn't rip, it doesn't do anything. I place it right back down on the tumbler and then whenever you have it placed where you want it to be placed, you take a paper towel and you just blot it dry. You don't rub, you don't smear. You simply blot the area dry, make sure your surface is completely dried before moving on to the next step. This is a part where I'm like, dang, I can see this drying and I can see the image outline where I cut. And by the way, if this was a clear image, you wouldn't be able to see where you cut. And I also would have cut these a little better <laughs> if I knew that I printed it on a white paper. But like I said, I completely forgot. I've had these images in my craft room for like a year. Like always, you know, you stock up for Christmas time. You don't use everything and you use them next year. At least that's what I do. But so um, this is what I'm thinking, like, how am I going to fix this? But I'm glad that I found a little solution for me. And I was really proud. I know it's something really small, but it's all about crafting and art. I love that whenever you make a mistake, you can fix it. It's a happy accident. So you can fix it and make it better and it will still turn out just as beautiful. So once I finish applying these to 
the tumblers, you want to make sure that they are completely dry before moving on. Like I said, make sure they are completely dry because if they aren't dry, then you're going to risk have that, uh, that image might move around, it might tear. So just be very careful with that their water slides so whenever they're wet they like to move around when they're dry they stay stuck to the uh, tumbler or your surface all right so let me tell y'all or show y'all how I did this snow effect um, I added some uh, apple barrel white paint way too much inside of my container and then I have my natural sponge and I bought this sponge a couple years ago and I just keep cutting it off like over and over again and I keep using it. I prefer a natural sponge because it has that texture. So I wanted it to look like how like snow would be blasted on the window. Like if you ever see that fake snow around the windows or even real snow around the windows, it has like that blast effect. And I know what you're thinking, what was the point of me adding that spray paint on back if I'm just going to do this? Well, the spray paint effect allowed it to really glow in the background. So you're still able to see the spray paint glowing in the background like as like snow does, and you still get to see that snow piled up around it, which is the acrylic paint. So I really like that I spray painted, I added the white image, and then I added the paint. Again, a happy accident. I'm so proud and so happy how these little adorable mugs turned out. And I really don't wanna sell them all, but <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to see them go. <laughs> so here's the two. The one on the left, I added the acrylic paint and the one on the right, I did not. You can barely see the line in the video, the one on the right where I didn't add the paint, but trust me, it's there, it's noticeable in person. So I, I had to do something to blend it all together. I'm actually really happy I did this because the next time when I do this and I print these out, on a clear water slide i'm probably still going to do this effect because i really like how it added some kind of like 3d effect gave it some depth it's really cute and i like that it had that snow effect and i love that it's in front of that spray paint that spray paint glowing in the back and making it like fade kind of i don't know how to explain it but i hope you guys are getting <laughs> what i'm trying to say so the great thing about this again, whenever you're finished adding this paint to the tumbler, you do not have to seal this at all. You just have to make sure your tumbler is completely dried. I'm adding a very little amount of paint. It's not too thick. So these took about 30 minutes to dry. Once this was dried, I was ready to move on to my epoxy. Now, since I do have a lot of paint on this, I did do two coats of epoxy. So I did uh, one coat, 15 mLs of epoxy, let that cure, and I did another coat, 15 mLs of epoxy. So I did two thinner coats opposed to one thick coat. So if you do that one thick coat, you're going to risk um, it pooling at the bottom if you have an uneven tumbler or it pooling around those handle areas. So again, I'd rather do the thin coats. I'd rather play it safe. And 15 mLs is probably a, a lot anyways, but I always like to mix more. And once you have a nice, even, thin coat, let that cure, you know, eight hours or so. It doesn't have to be 24 hours. And then add your final coat. Once my final coat of epoxy was on the tumbler, I cleaned it up, cleaned the rim, washed the inside out with some soap, and let me show y'all the finished results. These tumblers are so adorable. That blue with that snowman, baby, it's cold off. So everything about these just, I wish I didn't live in Florida and I wish I was actually inside of this tumbler, like a snow globe. <laughs> and again, if you guys do not wanna make these and you just wanna purchase them, they are available for sale on my website, misskisscreations.com, along with other tumblers. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tumbler craft videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.